and today we're going to be having a look at the miracles which are found on the tumor of Guadalupe, on the image of Guadalupe. Now we know from last week's talk that 9 million native Mexican Indians were converted shortly after this image was revealed. So what is so special about this image? That's what we want to investigate today. So the Aztecs, for some reason, were resisting the efforts to convert them. They were deeply rooted in their paganism, which demanded human sacrifices on a massive scale. The image appeared, and then suddenly, Dr. Ibarra continues, scarcely had the Most Holy Virgin of Guadalupe appeared and taken possession of this, her inheritance, when the Catholic faith spread with the rapidity of the light spreading from the sun as it rises in the morning. And so we need to know what is so special about this image. Hello friends and on Great Saints, we all realize we're going through difficult times, even crises in faith. So here we like to look upstream to the pure sources of the Great Saints to receive inspiration from them. So do join us in this apostolate. Now we can be absolutely sure that these conversions on this massive scale there was a super special grace associated with it. And it had something to do with Our Lady herself. Perhaps it was her special smile that enchanted people. But they were converting in a huge scale and the Mexicans were placing themselves under her protective mantle. The Aztecs were a defeated nation. They were a conquered nation. So they were in fact feeling very down in the dumps. And they were also very perceptive. So when they saw now all of these graces coming their way from the hand of Our Lady, they ran and they grabbed her hand. But also this Tilma seems to speak almost a different language to different people. And even today, we are a technologically minded people. It speaks in a technological way to us. The image is almost life-size. Interesting to note, the Aztecs, they didn't have a phonetic alphabet. As we have so they couldn't write words but they used what were called codices a system of codices these were like pictures pictograms or hieroglyphs where a picture could represent a whole concept and they were adept at reading these pictures and understanding what was going on from that now juan diego's tilma is filled with these codices and so the native indians they being perceptive they understood this and they started to be able to read what was happening in the picture. So even though the, the Spaniards themselves couldn't read half these symbols, the, the Mexicans could. And one such symbol, Our Lady is standing in front of the sun, meant to the Aztecs that she is more powerful than the Aztec sun god. But she also stands on the moon, so that she is more powerful than their moon god as well. Then their moon, their moon god was the serpent god. And scripture tells us that she crushes the head of the serpent. Very symbolic from both cultures. Now also interesting to note, they would have observed that her head is slightly to the right and looking slightly down. And to them that would have meant that she's saying she is not God herself. There is someone superior. Otherwise it would have been a direct look, I guess. By this Our Lady is showing humility. And so then the question would arise in their mind, well, who? And they'd start looking further to work out the other pieces in the puzzle. Another piece would be the complexion, the color, the skin color of Our Lady is the olive Mexican complexion. But if you move a little closer from a different angle, she's in fact lighter, more like a Spanish European complexion. So she's both complexions. And to the Aztecs, it was important that she is one of us would start to inspire hope in them. Now the color of the mantle in the picture is blue and blue meant royalty. So, and so there's something very important about this message, but also the stars on the blue imp implying that this message, this very important message comes to them from heaven. Now there's an interesting little brooch Our Lady is wearing. And the, the Aztecs knew about these brooches because when they were consecrating a temple, I think it was the priest or, would wear a highly polished mirror-like brooch. But in this case, it has this Christian symbol. So it's saying that Our Lady is dedicated to God, to the Christian God. 
Another thing, the dress that our lady is wearing is like a rose color with gold trimming on it. And this rose color was the color of Aztec princesses. So she's coming to these people as an Aztec princess, as one of them, but with a new religion. People have suggested that the dress that our lady is wearing is definitely not a Mexican cut, but they've suggested rather that it's, it's in line with people, how people dressed in Palestine. Perhaps the Arabs would dress like that in winter or the Jewish people would also dress like that. And her dress also radiates a sense of purity because the Mexicans were deep into their polygamy. So she had to really convey this idea of purity to them. The flower patterns on a dress are also very important. Now, if you take the two symbols which occur frequently together in these patterns, the one represents a mountain and the other represents the a river. So a mountain next to a river to an Aztec Mexican would have meant civilization. Our Lady is bringing to them civilization. She's not there to destroy their civilization. And if it's the other way around, as in other places, then it sing signifies that life comes from the river to the mountain. Life comes from God to them. And that's completely the opposite of their concept of human sacrifice being necessary to feed or to su sustain the gods. Life comes from God. And this was also proved with that Indian who was raised to life, as we saw in the last video. Another important thing. Um, from scripture we get the Lord himself will give you a sign the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son you'll call him Emmanuel so the virgin giving birth to a son that is also found in the Tilma and the, the, the two clues to that firstly a virgin in Aztec culture a lady whose hair was straight combed very straight meant that she was a virgin that she was a maiden that she was unmarried as soon as people got married, they would start to braid their hair. But the black sash around her stomach is telling the Aztecs that she's also pregnant. So a virgin who is pregnant. The whole image is conveying this, a virgin who's pregnant. So who could be so important in her womb? And the Aztecs were able to answer this one as well, because only one place on, on her dress, there is a four petal flower that occurs. And that was known, that symbol was known to the Aztecs. In fact, the city, Nocohan, which became Mexico City later on, it was in this four shaped petal. And at the center was where the temples were. And the temples had to deal with their gods. So they understood from this that in Our Lady's womb is God Himself. Our Lord Jesus Christ is in her womb. Just reading those symbols. So that's absolutely fascinating. But there's so many other incredible things about this image. So these are the direct symbols which we can find in the image. There are, and there are others which can be inferred as well. There's a whole series of optical illusions, it seems. Reversals, they call them. Um, for instance, the complexion of her skin changing from olive to a lighter, more whitish, Spanish, European type of skin. That's an illusion depending on how far or close you are to the image you'll see one or the other another reversal usually usually if you look at something the more close you look at it the more detail you see on it but with this image it's the other way around so if you're standing close to the image those stars will be blurry you won't even hardly see them you go further away and they drum, jump out like crystals People also say that when you enter the Basilica, it's like this image is huge as you look at it. And then as you walk forward, it seems to get smaller until it becomes life-size. Another interesting optical reversal. These things are completely counterintuitive. And the Aztec Indians would have noticed these things as well and noticed there's something very unusual about this image. They say also the knee of Our Lady is bent. And to the Aztecs, that was the custom of the time is that a bent knee means she is praying. They would dance and chant slowly or sing as part of their prayer. So there's an association, Our Lady is praying. Of course, the hands together for the Spaniards would have meant Our Lady is praying, but this apparently to the Mexicans would have meant, I am bringing you a gift, please accept my gift. 
gift being our Lord. And the other miracles as well. We saw the Indian being brought to life. And at one point, there was a plague sweeping through Mexico. It stopped after, after prayers to the image. We do encourage you to join us this apostolate. It would be tremendous if you will help us by liking our video, sharing the video with friends, with colleagues, anyone who may benefit. And do make sure that you are subscribed to our channel as well. Oh,